Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new Apple Watch Series 6, and today we're gonna be comparing it to my Series 5. There are a lot of similarities, but there also are some differences. We're gonna point out all of those to you guys. There's a couple things I'm really excited about testing out, such as the brightness difference and the always on display, but let's go ahead and jump right into it and get this opened up. I did get the one that has the new red color. So that's one of the differences. We have new color options. There's also a blue, and then there's a titanium, a dark one, as you guys can see right here. It's always really cool to see how it's clean on the outside and they add color and some design elements on the inside. I did order the new braided solo loop and charcoal and FedEx is supposed to deliver it today with the watch, but it's not here. So I'm excited to check that out and I'm gonna do a little review video on that. So make sure you guys are subscribed Let's pop this open. So it does come with a charging cable, uh, but we do not have a power brick, which is why this is so slim. Now here's something very interesting for you guys. I have my previous Apple Watch boxes and Apple has made a lot of changes over the years. So let me grab my Series 5, which is right there. It's the same width, but you guys can see how much slimmer the new one is because they're not including that USB charger. You guys let me know, what do you think about that? And this is my original Apple Watch. This is the cheap version back there. Look how much bigger this is. And the box is just so much nicer from before, even with the cheap sport models. They also gave us this nice plastic hard case and then you open that up and there's a soft material over here. And then like the whole box on the inside that holds everything is just way heavier and nicer. It's kind of a shame that now if you're buying a more expensive watch, the packaging is just a lot worse. They're just trying to cut costs, that's my opinion. Let's go ahead and take it out here. Let's pop this and I love red. It's my favorite color. So I'm excited to see this red one. I've bought gold the last few years. Come on, this thing is, cardboard now or paper instead of being a soft material like my other ones. So here we have it. It looks nice, looks like a nice aluminum red. I also pulled the straps out here. But this is very interesting. The straps don't look as deep and rich of a red as I expected. They don't really match up to the watch. I'm guessing this is probably on purpose, uh, but it's a little too light uh, for my liking. I mean, obviously it's not pink, but it's closer on the pinker side than I would want. So I can't wait to get that charcoal braided loop in. Let's jump into comparing the exteriors and both of these are 44 millimeter models. So it's interesting that my previous gold series five stainless steel just looks a little bit more substantial. I think that's probably because of the reflections um, from the coating on here. And then the band, the Milanese loop also comes out a little bit with, with the steel instead of just you know being recessed in there. So it looks a little bit larger, looks nicer of course than the aluminum. But other than that, the, the top and the front looks identical. Identical. The crowns look the same, and as far as thickness, they look identical as well. Now let's go ahead and flip these over to the bottom. Let me clean these off here really quick. And by the way, you can pick up one of these Max Tech super soft, nice shirts in the merch shelf down below, or a mask or a hoodie. Let's flip these over. Uh, yeah, so the sensors are definitely different. The Series 5 looks like it has one light in the center and then sensors around, whereas the Series 6 has four lights all around and then we have four circular sensors. And that's because the Series 6 has those extra features that we'll talk about in just a bit. Now, before we test out those new sensors, let's compare the displays. So right here, I have one of the new watch faces and I wanna let you guys know that all the new watch faces are available on the Series 5 and the Series 4, so that's not a reason to upgrade. Now, as far as the screens, they are identical, the same exact size, the corners are rounded the same as you guys could see right here. Now, as far as the brightness of the screen, some people have been saying that the new one is brighter, but it's not supposed to be brighter in the regular mode. The peak brightness is actually the same. It's the always on mode. We're gonna test out a series of different watch faces to see how that affects it. I have both of these set to the maximum brightness. We adjusted that top camera for the displays, not the table, and let's do our first test. There we go. And what do you see, Vadim? Let me look at the camera. It looks the same to me. Yeah, I am not seeing any difference in brightness with the always on mode. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, the settings are maxed out. There's no extra setting that I found. Let's try one of the new ones here. So here we go. They look the same. 
and they look the same. They look the same. Uh, so it does actually have an ambient sensor on the Apple Watch. So let's pull out my phone here, grab the flashlight, and see if that makes any difference for us. I don't know where the sensor is. It's brighter, but not by that much. You guys can the, see from above. I can see the outline better. Yeah, I mean, there's also better contrast, which helps. Yeah, it, it is brighter for sure. Here we have another new one. This is the count up one for people that, I think they said racing, right? I don't know. Um, let's go like this. Honestly, hearing two and a half times more, I was expecting a drastic difference. And that was probably my biggest complaint about the Series 5 is that the always on mode was not bright enough. Let me try the gradient one. This is one that I liked with my stainless steel for the gold color, but it just wasn't bright enough for me to use it consistently. Do that. It's a little brighter. <laughs> it's a little bit brighter. Throw some light on here. Okay, both of them I see got brighter. I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little bit disappointed by that. Let's try out this Chronograph Pro. I think that's actually the racing one. Let's go ahead and do, or maybe that's a diving one. I don't know. Once again, the result looks very similar, at least to my eyes. And just to double check for myself and to prove to you guys that in the settings, there is no additional option for brightness during always on. We just have one setting here. The always on mode is on and both of them are maxed out. So that is definitely a bummer. But on the plus side, one thing that I didn't expect as I was going through adding these watch faces, you guys see sometimes there's just a little bit of stuttering where this one is perfectly smooth. So there definitely is a difference in performance with the new chip here. Now let's get back into the sensors and there are a ton of different similarities between them along with some of the features. So before I show you guys the actual differences and we test those out, we actually wrote a list of similarities. So both of them have the same second gen heart sensors. There's the same compass, the same accelerometer, the same fall detection, the same exact 50 meters of water resistance, same 32 gigabytes of storage, same ceramic and sapphire glass, same speakerphone, same microphone, uh, same noise app support, the same W3 chip, and the same exact Bluetooth 5. So a lot of the features are identical. Now we do have the differences now. So we have new Wi-Fi 5 support for the Series 6. Instead of just 2.4 gigahertz, it will do uh, 5 gigahertz. And for me, that was never an issue, but I did notice some people complain about it taking too long to put music on there. So that could be a benefit to you. And then we have the always on altimeter. So if you're somebody that hikes, you can use that function. Along with that, there's another hardware difference inside, and that's that the new Series 6 has the U1 chip, the same as in the new iPhones, and that means in the future, your phone will be able to track your watch, and potentially, if it's hidden behind a wall or under a couch cushion, it's gonna be really easy to find it. So that is a nice feature. Now, probably the biggest one that they cared about on screen was the new blood oxygen sensor. So we are gonna go ahead and test that out. It is showing me, don't have it too close up, which is fine, it's right here. Don't want it too tight, but you want it snug. Have facing up, relaxed, just exactly like I'm doing. Now, I don't know how much this matters for a lot of people. For me, I'm usually good, but if you're somebody with allergies or health conditions, this could definitely be a reason to upgrade to the new one. Looks like I'm at 96 once I re removed my watch and put this in the right spot. So that is pretty good, and that could definitely be handy as I mentioned. So with all of that said, who should upgrade from a Series 5 to a Series 6? And if you're buying one, should you buy a Series 6 or should you try to get a discounted Series 5? I saw some great deals on Amazon. We'll link them down below for you to check out. First off, if that new blood oxygen sensor is very convenient to you, I think that's probably gonna be the biggest reason to upgrade. The display brightness, that didn't show up that much. The altimeter, I don't think that matters that much as well, unless you really constantly need to know what your altitude is. And another reason to upgrade for some people are gonna be the colors. We have that blue, we have this red, there's some actually titanium edition models as well. So those are gonna be appealing to some people. I personally am a big fan of red, uh, but one big disappointment is that if you're buying this product red model, you have to get a red band. This standard sport band, I really don't like the color of it. I'm gonna be taking this off right away. Now the braided solo loop, that is a deeper red. I like how that 
that looks much better, but you can't change out any other ones. You have to get a red band. So I ordered the charcoal braided solo loop. And if you're ordering separately, it costs a hundred bucks instead of 50 getting it together. So that's a bummer because if you get say the blue one, you can choose any band you want with it. You can save the money if you want to go with something else. So it sucks that they're limiting you there. Now, if you're looking to buy one instead of upgrade, should you buy the Series 6 or should you get a discounted Series 5? Personally, as long as you don't need the blood oxygen, as long as you don't want one of these new colors, I would say go for the Series 5. There's just way too many similarities and the display brightness, as far as we could see, wasn't really that noticeable. So I would save the money and go for a Series 5 instead. Once again, there's links down in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Click that circle above to subscribe for our full review, the review of that new solo braided loop watch band when I get that one in, and some other comparisons. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.